hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a children's folding rocking chair. Well, many years ago I used to make these pine folding rocking chairs and sell them at local craft fairs. And it was a great way to make a little extra cash and on top of that, they were great, um, they were great skill builders is what they were. And that is what we're going to build today. Now, the originals that I made had templates that, of course, I made up and then used to make multiples of this. And I would suggest that you guys make templates for yours as well if you are going to be making more than one of these. Um, what I'm going to try to do is by the time this airs, I'm hoping to have a pattern done that if you guys message me on the channel's Facebook page, I can send you a PDF of the pattern and then you guys can make your own templates from there. Either way, it all starts over at the bench and we're going to make the seat for starters. Well, the way that we're going to start this project off is with a three quarter inch thick piece of pine. And we're going to square off one side and then we're going to cut it to dimensions of 10 and 5 eighths wide by 10 and 3 quarters long. It's important to have the grain going along with the 10 and 3 quarter side. Well, we need to do a little bit of layout on this board and we can see the grain running this way here. This is the 10 and 3 quarter inch length. The first thing that we want to do is pick the front of our seat. So I'm going to make this the front of our seat. So the first thing that we want to do is coming in from this side edge here and the front edge, we're going to come in three and one quarter inches and we're going to draw a mark on each one. So there's three and one quarter, just like that. And we're going to do that on both sides. Now what this will be is the pivot point for an arc that we need to put here. We're going to round off our corners and we need to set our compass for a three and a quarter inch radius. This will be our pivot point here at three and a quarter. We're just going to set it up and round off both front corners. So there's one and then we'll place our compass on the other just like this. And there we go. There is our two front corners rounded off. Well, the next layout step involves the side sections right here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this around. I want to place a mark across the back of our seat on each side at five and one quarter inches in. One there and then another one here at five and a quarter, one there and as well from the edge one inch all the way from that line all the way back to the back of our chair and we'll repeat that on the other side as well now these sections that we just drew that will be this section and this section these are all off cuts now we need to notch that out you can use whatever you want if you want to use a hand saw you can use a hand saw you want to use a fret saw use a fret saw you want to use your band saw great whatever you like we're also going to cut this front corner off here and this front corner off here so to do all of this I'm actually going to use the scroll saw then we're going to take it over to the sander sand up to the lines on our radiuses and then I'll come back and see you. Yeah. 
and that would be the rough shaping of our seat. So for now, we can put this piece aside and we're going to turn our attention to making the backrest. So to start off with the backrest, we're going to need two pieces that are 10 and 1 8 of an inch long. One of them will be 2 and 7 8 of an inch wide and one of them will be 1 and 3 quarter inches wide. And we're going to take that over to the table saw and cut those out. Well, my original design of the chair uh, consisted of screws that held this backrest in place, but this time I don't want to use that. So what we're going to use is we're going to be doing mortise and tenon. So for that reason, we will be marking a three quarter inch tenon on each edge of our backrest here. This is the lower section of our backrest and we will just mark it on each side. Now you can use a square and carry these lines around if you like. That works too. Now depending on the method that you're going to be using uh, to cut these tenons, you can really get away with only marking it on one or possibly two sides. Uh, if you're doing it by hand, I would suggest marking it on all sides. I'm going to be doing mine at the table saw, so really I only need to mark one side and then I'm going to duplicate it using a stop block and I'll show you that when I go to cut my tenons. So we'll mark it here on both sides, three quarters of an inch in. I'm not going to mark this one all the way around because I just need it for the table saw. It's, I'm just demonstrating here. And then we will take our upper section, sorry, this is our lower section of our backrest. We will take our upper section, which is our three inch wide or two and seven eighths inch wide piece, and we will do the exact same thing. We are going to mark our tenons. Now let me just point out to you that if you are doing this at the table saw with a stop block like I'm doing it, you do not need to mark it on both pieces because that stop block is, uh, is going to be the same. In other words, these are both cut exactly the same length and if they both have three quarter tenons on the end then they're going to be identical. So really it's not necessary to mark it on all the pieces like that. The next thing that we want to do is we want to mark the center of each of these pieces and we're going to mark it on the three quarter inch side. So if this is ten and an eighth, half of ten and an eighth is five and a sixteenth. That's right there. And just to confirm our measurement, of course, we will mark this side here at five and a sixteenth as well. And we can see they are a tiny bit off, just a touch. So we will mark in between those in order to get our center. Not everything is perfect, is it? There we go. We will also mark a center line all the way down one side here. It's a three quarter inch board, so three eighths will be our center. And once again, to confirm, we'll do it on the other side as well. Never hurts to double check. And now along that board from our center mark, an inch and a half out, and then another inch and a half out from both sides, we're going to place a mark. And these will be for drilling. As I said on that center mark, one and a half inches back from our center, so right here, and then again here, that will give us our marks for drilling, and then we'll do the same 
on the other side. If you want the marks from the end or the measurements from the end, it's actually three and nine sixteenths from the end and two and a sixteenth from the end of our board here out and that will give you the proper measurement of an inch and a half between each of these holes. And now this piece here is pretty much marked out. So we're going to leave this for now and we're going to turn our attention on to the upper backrest piece. And the first place we're going to start now that we have all of our um, tenons marked on it, we are going to place the same marks for our holes as we placed on our lower backrest piece. And before we move on, we just want to give each one of these markings a center punch. Well, at this point, it is time to mark the top profile of our backrest. The section that you marked and center punched, that is the bottom of the upper backrest. And we need to, from that bottom, place a mark over here at our three quarter inch inline for our tenons. We need to place a mark at an inch and a half in, and this will be the lower limit sort of thing or the lower dimension of our profile. We also need to give ourselves a center mark. Now we already have one there from where we marked our tenon. So all I'm going to do is transfer that around just like this. Transfer that and transfer this line just like that. There's our center mark. And now what we want to produce now, you can use French curves, you can freehand it or whatever like, you can use a soup can for all I care. You want a nice arch here at the top and that will form down like this to another sweeping arch that will join up with our inch and a half line. And you will end up with something like this. Well, that is the layout now for the upper backrest. And at this point in time, we can take it over to the drill press because we have a little bit of drilling to do for those holes that we marked and center punched. Now, what I've got is I have a 3 8 inch diameter drill bit and I have it set uh, so that the depth stop will allow it to drill a hole that is three quarters of an inch deep. I also have uh, the fence set up so that it is drilling right in the middle of our board. That way we have uniform drilling all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this piece here and I'm going to drill my five holes. We're going to line up the depth stop or line up our stop block here. We're going to drill our first hole. And what we're going to do so that they're symmetrical is I'm going to end up. Um, well, let me just show you. Let me drill this first hole. All right. And there's our first one drilled. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to clear these chips away. I'm then going to line it up for my next hole out in the line. There we go. It's lined up. Place my stop lock in place. Slide it over. Lock it down. Double check. I must have knocked it just a touch because it's a tiny bit out. And we'll just double check it here once again. That is beautiful. And we're going to drill this hole and then spin it 180 degrees and drill this one. And then we will repeat the process for our last two holes. Line it up. 
make sure that we're set just like that loosen our stop block slide it over double check oh, it's a little off again I gotta stop sliding that stop block so vigorously over there there we are and repeat the process <laughs> And with these holes in the lower backrest drilled, we will now repeat the process with the upper backrest, the bottom end of it, drilling these five 3 8 holes three quarters of an inch deep. Well, before you carry on any further now, I'm just going to line up the center lines of our pieces and the edges, and you just want to look and make a visual confirmation that all your holes are exactly lined up and exactly the same. It's important that they all align. If they don't, you've got a problem, find out what that problem is and fix it. Chances are, at this point, if they don't line up, you've got to make a new piece of whichever one doesn't line up. Now that we have that done and we have this profile drawn, it's time to make our tenons. And for that, we're going to head to the table saw. Well, I want these tenons to be a half an inch thick. And in order to do that, I need to take a quarter of an inch off of each one of the sides. So I have my blade raised to one eighth of an inch above the table and I've locked it down. I have the depth stop on my miter fence set so that the blade strikes just to the outside of the line that I've drawn. And all I'm gonna do now is take each piece run it through on all four sides and then flip it 180 degrees and do the exact same thing and that will be the starter line of my tenon. And there we have our first cut defining the shoulder of the tenon and I'm going to repeat that process on the upper uh, section of our back support. Well, I know that some of you don't have dado blades and that sort of thing. There is many different ways to cut these. You can cut these by hand if you wish. Now that you have the shoulders cut, you could have even cut the shoulders by hand. It is completely up to you. Just for sake of simplicity and try to accommodate as many of you as I can, because I know there are some without dado blades, all I'm going to do here is raise this stop up out of my way and keep making multiple passes, nibbling away until I get the tenon on all four sides or the waste area of the tenon uh, cut away on all four sides of each end of each piece. Well, now that your tenons are done, it is time to cut the profile. But before you can do that, you need to mark the end of your tenon here. So from this section right here at one and three eighths of an inch up from the bottom, we're going to line up a square and we're going to place a mark on your tenon. This is where you will cut it to equal the 1 8 inch shoulder on the opposite side. And you will do the same thing on this side here. We have a mark here at 1 and 3 8 inch up from the bottom, and we will just place a square there and place a line to mark our tenon. That tenon can be cut on the scroll saw. It's a very simple thing. Just run the blade in and stop it at the shoulder. You can trim off this little bit here after. We will trim this now on the scroll saw and from there we will take it over to the oscillating drum sander where we will clean it up and make it all purdy. So first things first, we're going to cut the long line here for our tenon along with the grain. So we'll just get that cut. Just like that. We'll do the same thing on the other side.
and then we'll cut our profile of our backrest. And now that we can see a little better that we have the material removed, we can just put our blade tight to that shoulder and just trim this one little piece off to complete our tenons. Well, the last thing of preparation here is we're going to take a 1 8 inch round over and we're going to knock off the sharp edges along that profile and the bottoms and the tops of our backrest pieces. I will caution you, when you are doing the round over on the side that has our holes, do not run your bearing along here while doing the round over. It will sink into these holes and cause you problems. So you either want to run it on this edge or you want to take temporary dowels and fill in those holes so that they don't uh, cause a divot for your bearing to go into. I'm going to run along the outside of it and put our round overs there. Well, with everything sanded now, it's time to put our backrest together. So I'm just going to place the bottom section of the backrest into the vise, clamp it down there securely, and I have five pieces of 3 8 inch dowel, and I've cut them to a length of 7 inches. And all we're going to do is apply a little bit of wood glue, and we're going to install them in the holes that we drilled. And we'll just tap them down until they bottom out. And then you want to get like a cotton swab here. And we're just going to clean up all of the squeeze out around that dowel. So we'll continue there and install all five of our dowels into our lower section. Well, if you're following along, you should have something that looks like this. And all we're going to do now is clamp the upper section of our upright in place. And we're going to glue these five dowels now into our top section. And once you've got it glued in place, you just want to get a tape measure and you just want to ensure that it's equal distances on either side before the glue sets. And we are perfect there. So we will clamp this back here into the vise, clean up our squeeze outs our squeeze out rather, and then we're going to apply some clamps to it and put it off to the side and let that dry. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week's show. Um, I did not intend for this to be a multi-part build, but there's a lot of information here. So, um, you know what? If it's going to be a two-part, then it's going to be a two-part. That's all there is to it. If you haven't already, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed the content so far. There's a lot more to go, guys, and I hope you're going to join me for that next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.